Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics. I am here in East Chicago, Indiana. Not Chicago, Indiana. It's just East Chicago. So if you're coming to this story for the first time, uh, East Chicago, Indiana, it's about 40 minutes to an hour from Chicago. Um, this is an industrialized city, um, and where I am right now is called the West Calumet Complex. So the West Calumet Complex was built in the 1970s. It's a uh, low, low income, uh, predominantly African American uh, complex. Uh, it's a government housing uh, complex. And uh, keeping it real, it's, it's, a, it's poor people. That, that's, that's who lives here. So uh, East, Cal East West Calumet Complex and Greater East Chicago was uh, a city built essentially on top of and surrounding lead. This complex was built uh, on top of a lead refinery. I got the picture. Where's that? Oh, it's right down there. So give me that. I don't know how much this is going to show up, but literally that's the sign for this complex back in the day. It was uh, the home of Anaconda White Lead. So that was what you saw when you came into this complex. Okay, so what could go wrong building a low-income, poor black complex on top of a lead plant, right? So uh, the EPA uh, knew about the high levels and potential for contamination here for a long time. Uh, they did testing throughout the decades in certain hot, what they called hot spots, but they never did a full comprehensive test of the whole complex here. So in July of 2016, they tested this whole complex, the ground soil predominantly. Uh, and they found that the levels of lead in the ground soil were over 212 times the allowable limit for lead. So the allowable limit for lead, in my opinion, is some arbitrary number they come up with because really you shouldn't have lead in your system. And as you know, lead is very toxic and uh, deadly for children particularly. It affects the IQ, it affects behavior, it affects a lot of things, which we're going to get to in a minute. So that's where we are right now. In August of last year, I was down here for the first time, and I spoke with someone from the EPA. The EPA was here doing the testing of the ground soil. What, they, what, what he told me was this is not Flint. This is not a water issue. That's August of last year. Not a water issue. Three months later, it came out, they're finding lead in the water. They're finding lead, uh, this is zone one, where we are. Zone one, West Calumet Complex. Zone two uh, and zone three are more, more homes. This is an apartment complex. So that the EPA has tested about 40 homes. However, the EPA does not test for uh, every single contaminant you could have. And that's where this gentleman comes in who I'm with. His name is Scott Smith. Uh, we tested our first home yesterday. Um, you are with Water Defense. It's a uh, activist environmental group. Mark Ruffalo, who's an actor, uh, environmentalist, uh, set it up. You have spearheaded testing in Flint, which about 30 homes in Flint and other cities. Explain uh, your testing and what you're testing for that uh, outlets like the EPA uh, might not be looking at. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to add one thing. I'm also actively working uh, in research with the United Association of Plumbers and Pipefitters, 350,000 mem union members available in every city across the country. And it's, this all started in Flint with the UA370. So what we do is we test the water as it enters the premise or the site. So you need to know the, the water you're paying for. Mm -hmm. What's in it? The full spectrum, bacteria. Not just lead, but everything else. And all the different you know possible contaminants and we test the water heater because that water heater is like an incubator in the, a forensic device of what's passed through the system mm -hmm. and we test the hot water in the shower what we learned in flint in my work with the plumbers union mm -hmm. is that cold sink water was being tested and the water was being declared safe there are no bathing standards there are no showering standards so when these declarations got made that it's okay to bathe and shower based on cold sink water that it meets regulations. Well, if the regulations don't exist, it, you know, I, I like to use a simple analogy, Jordan. If if murder weren't illegal, but assault and battery, if I punch you, I go to jail. But if I murder you, I don't. I could murder you and say, 
that I'm in, in complete compliance with the regulations. That that you know that's a very helpful analogy. That's yeah. that's what that's what's going on with what we call these false narratives in spinning this. So what what we're in summary, we, we need a complete picture of how you encounter water. You take a shower every day. You don't just take it for a split second. We take split second samples and we also take exposure over time to see what you're exposed to. Because water and contamination are never in equilibrium or a closed loop. Like a bottle of soda, a bottle of beer, a bottle of water, mm -hmm. if you take a sample from there, it's representative because it's closed loop. You can't, but you've got all these flowing pipes and all these different contaminants and everything going on. So I want to I wanna dumb that down for a minute because this stuff gets complicated. So the, I'm not, uh, I am not condemning the entire EPA. There are plenty, he, he could attest to that. Most of the EPA wants to find whatever is in people's homes. But they're testing Flint, for example, cold water. Uh, and hot water is where you find the, the worst levels for lead and things like that. A hot water is connected to the home water heater. Well, they're telling people on cold water to use a, sh a water filter and they're sick. Okay. I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a scientist, but I've spoken with scientists and experts who say filters do not 100% stop all lead particles. Filters also do not stop bacteria. Because all the headlines around the country for these stories, all you hear about is lead. Excuse, filters can promote bacteria growth. Right. And that's, there's been a lot of research done in Flint right. as a result of that. But more importantly, if you shower in hot water and lead is coming down, or Scott has found things called like chloroform, you know chloroform? It's like in those scary movies, they put a, 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 a hot cloth on your face and you pass out. That's chloroform. So if, they, if you inhale those things, there is very bad consequences because it's going into your lungs and then it spreads to your body. I want to get to those consequences. Now, we don't know what's in this home yet. We haven't tested it. But I want to show you cause and effect. Okay, you with me? So we're going to tilt so you get a quiche a little bit. All right. So I'm here with Akisha Daniels. Uh, we've spoken two other times. You, uh, I hate to blow up your spot, being a, a young, beautiful woman, but you're 40? Yes, I'm 40. Okay, you're 40. <laughs> Usually don't go on women's ages, but it's important in this context. Okay. All right. So you, you're uh, a mother of three? I'm a mother of three sons. Three sons. You moved in here in 2004, correct? Yes, sir. March okay. first. Tell me about, did you have health problems? Uh, you know, little things here and there, but did you have health problems before you moved in here? Um, little things here and there, colds, normal things, but um, after moving in here, I began to, my health began to deteriorate mm -hmm. rapidly. Uh, so tell me about what was the first symptoms and illnesses you were seeing after moving in here? Well, the first symptoms, I gave birth to a child in 2004 where I had a C-section. Um, after moving in here, less than a month of having him, I began to have problems like um, maybe female problems where I was almost to the point where I was hemorrhaging, um, needing blood um, transfusions, DNCs and different things and all of that led up to me having a complete hysterectomy in 2006. At age? 29. Age 29 you had a full hysterectomy? Yes, they removed everything and sent me straight into menopause. And. From there, it's been a kind of domino effect. You've had one thing after the other. Yes, I've had a lot of things happen. Um, I've lost 50% of my bone mass. Um, some days I am immobile. Um, a lot of joint swelling and pains from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet where I've been taking steroids. So my weight is up and down. I'm losing a lot of hair. Um, my sleeping is off completely and I'm just irritated a lot. No family history for any of this? No family histories of this. Mm. So I want to get to your son. You got three boys. One's 19. Uh, one is 19. Well, my oldest is 25. My second is 19, and my baby boy is 13. Okay. So the 13-year-old was literally a month old when you moved in here. Yes, less than a month old, two days shy. Okay. So tell me about your other boys compared to the the one who's lived here all his life. Uh, the health health status. Well, my oldest is very healthy. Um, he's 25. He's roughly maybe about 6'2", maybe 250. Very healthy. Other than, you know, the ailments and hurts and pains from playing football and wrestling, he was good. My 19-year-old, um, we've had a lot of stomach problems, digestive problems, where he's having almost like a blockage of being able for his everything to flow through his intestines and different things. Um, severe headaches. Um, 
uh, with him, but the 13 year old, um, we've had problems since maybe about the age of five or six. Um, behavior problems in school, um, not pro learning basic sight words that he should know. And now at the age of 13, we're um, five, nine and 144 pounds. He doesn't, um, he's reading at a fourth grade level. When he's in the sixth grade, we've been retained once. We were allergic to 30 out of 60 things that he was tested for, as far as ragweed, dust, cat dander, all of those different things, grass, basic things that I didn't know um, that he was allergic to. And we're just having a problem with learning disabilities right now and behavior in school. And he's got ADHD. And he has ADHD, yes, and asthma as well. So why I'm bringing all this up, I'm not a doctor, but he moved in here one month old. Yes. They found 212 times the allowable limit of lead in the ground soil. Yes. You showed me a picture. Sorry, I can't show you it, but literally they dug up your, your bathtub. Yes. And underneath, there was no floor. No it floor. It was just the ground. Probably the same, <laughs> probably the same um, dust and dirt from outside. With lead. Contaminated dirt, well, contaminated lead soil. And we, and we know that lead affects people, uh, especially young children's IQ. Yes. Um, uh, mood, yes. you see with uh, high crime areas, there's a direct correlation with lead. So without being a doctor, it's, poten it's potentially cause and effect. Yes, it is. I, I, I believe everything is all tied in together. Mm -hmm. So what I think is truly potentially scandalous, we'll see what results we get when we test this house. Once they tested, once they tested for the ground soil and they found 212 times the allowable limit, in the ground soil, uh, as far as I know, as far as I know, I could be wrong, and if I am, I'll admit it, they have not tested the water, the, the drinking water in these homes. I know for sure they didn't test your drinking water. No, they didn't test it. Right. I'm, I don't think they test it. They haven't been in here to test it. Right. So basically, common sense would dictate, hmm, if the ground soil is a toxic wasteland of lead, and there's also arsenic that they have found, yes. maybe you'd want to test the water. But the EPA told me in August, this is not a water issue. They said, this is not like Flint, this is not a water issue. Benefited the doubt to them, I'm sure they thought that and truly believed that. Three months later, it came out, they're finding water all over the place. Now, I, uh, excuse me, lead in the water, in other homes. Uh, so I wanted to point out, I. I didn't say this in the beginning, this complex is being condemned. They're demolishing the complex and they're forcing the residents out. So uh, about half, would you say, of the residents are already out? Yes, about half. I think we started off with 347, 46 units and we're roughly down to 124 mm -hmm. that still have families in. So, so, but let's say, for example, we test the water today and we find things. If they did not test the water, and they have left people in here. This all came out in July, nationally. They have left people in here without testing their water and people might be drinking, showering contaminated water. They got some explaining to do. I might have egg on my face and we'll find no problem. I hope we find no problem. However, Scott could talk about what we've seen so far. These are, these units uh, have I mean, it doesn't look like it's state-of-the-art, these pipes and those kinds of things. No, and what we've seen in the last 24 hours, lots of old, rusted, galvanized pipes. And from the initial testing, I was in here when you first came here, we've seen enough and found lead in, in a variety of locations. Mm -hmm. So we've already found concerning chemicals. Yeah. Pot, you know, 42 parts per billion in chloroform from mm -hmm. a grab sample is, that's pretty high. Right. So... I also want to broaden this out so you understand what's really going on here. And this is where the trolls are going to come after me, so I'm ready for you. This is an issue of environmental racism. Let me explain why. So, have you ever heard of a wealthy white town where they built a lead plant on a wealthy white apartment complex? If you have, send me, send me the link. I'd love to vacation there. Have you ever heard of if they found a complex in a wealthy white area uh, that they found toxic levels of lead that they left the people in there for eight months or did they put them up at the plaza until they relocated them vice president mike pence was the governor when this news came out he was the governor of indiana mm -hmm. in february of last year 
there was a lead in the water issue in Greentown, Indiana. Greentown, Indiana is 97% white. Mike Pence went down to Greentown, Indiana. He spoke with officials in Greentown, Indiana, at the school in the, in the city. Within two months, it was fixed like that. Did Mike Pence ever come down here? I haven't seen him. I saw him on TV in Chicago. But he's never been to East Chicago, Indiana. Yeah, no, he never came down here. Uh, this came out nationally in July uh, of last year, same time he was picked as vice president. Never came down here. He sent his lieutenant governor, who is now the governor. Why that's important. Uh, Mike Pence also, w when he did not come down here when this came out, he left the campaign trail to go visit a white town that was struck by a tornado. He should, you know, that was correct for him to do that. No problem with that. But it seems that Mike Pence, right away, if a white town had an issue with lead in the water, he went down there and it was fixed in two months. Or so we think it's fixed. Uh, a white town by, struck by a tornado, he's there in a minute. Nice photo op, he left the campaign trail. After Trump and him were elected, obviously they are uh, in the transition period. In December of last year, he denied the mayor's request to declare this an emergency disaster. When you, when you get emergency disaster uh, categorization, you get extra funding. He denied it. He said, we've given you $200,000, that's enough. Well, as two, with less than two months into the current governor's uh, term, again, Eric Holcomb was Pence's lieutenant governor. He came down here. He has declared it a disaster emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a Republican, so credit where credit is due. So why this is important? You know, environmental racism is much bigger than Mike Pence. But these people, an African-American, this community is af predominantly African-American and Latino. Uh, they have been begging for help. They've been pleading for help. When this news came out in this complex that everybody, they were going to uh, demolish it, everybody had to leave, they said, you could explain it, they said they were going to give you housing vouchers to move. How much help have you gotten? Um, I got a voucher. That's about it. That's about it. Um, I've been doing all of my research and looking for a place on my own. And I felt like they were going to do more, but they did. And when the EPA came to test your ground soil or anything else, did they communicate with you on, on what they found and all those things? Well, they didn't really communicate about the ground soil. They communicated more with me about what was in inside in my, inside of my unit. And I was at a 32,000 with lead and 800 with arsenic inside of my unit. Which is not normal. No, that I didn't think it was normal. They put us into a hotel for five days and they were supposed to do the cleaning, but I'm not sure if, it's, if we've recontaminated the house as well with that. Because no one's been back since September. And they didn't, you don't know what they cleaned, you don't know what they did. Well, as far as I know, they cleaned the walls and the floors, and that was it. They didn't touch any furniture, bedding, or anything else. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming all these uh, bills you've had for health, your kids, I'm sure you've gone out of pocket quite a bit. Yeah, somebody's paying for it, <laughs> one way or another. <laughs> yeah, it's going to hurt me one way or another. And also, when you move, you can't take this furniture, because it's probably... What we're sitting on right now is contaminated. Yes, I'm, I'm worried about the cloth furniture being contaminated. With my unit being at a 32,000, I'm sure that everything in here is mainly contain, uh, contaminated with the lead and that I may have to leave everything and start all over again. And straight up, sorry to say, it's not like you're rolling in the dough to be buying new furniture, moving expenses. I actually had a hot water tank to rupture in 2008. And this was the new furniture that I had to save up a couple of years to receive in 2011. And now 2016, 2017, I have to leave it all over again and start all over. And I'm a single parent of three. So I, I don't have money like that to just keep starting over. And they're not offering any help. Housing isn't offering any help towards helping us purchase the big items. Because I'm even worried about my washer and dryer now. And very important. When you moved into this apartment complex, did it say anything on your lease, on any paperwork, that there was a lead plant here, that there was possible contamination, anything? It actually told us that it was a lead free. It was lead free. Hmm. It, it actually states in the good. details good. about the paint, everything. Yeah, it, it, it's basically saying that it was lead free. 
they they said we had right. we have examined this home and it's lead free. Well, they didn't say they examined it. It's in, it's just some clause written inside of our lease that was basically telling us that it wasn't any lead. But I was always thinking that there was lead because I knew back when they built this, the paint had lead in it. So if you're if any type of dust, I will believe, will be coming off the walls. Um, when I first moved into the complex in 2008, I mean, well, 2004, I'm sorry, um, they were painting the insides of the tubs. <laughs> so every time that you took a shower, because this is my second unit out here, I lived at 4905 Locksburg, the tubs were actually had paint in them. So when you would clean it with Comet, or try to clean the tub, you could see the paint chips coming out. So people have to realize that their young daughters, these mothers were sitting in these tubs and all these paint chips were entering into their bodies in areas that they shouldn't be. And we don't know what that could have caused back then. And make it, expanding this beyond just your family, talk about this community here. Uh, what are some of the common problems that people have seen in this complex? I know around the city, there's a lot of upper respiratory things, bronchitis, uh, respiratory issues, um, but I've heard everything from women losing their teeth in their 40s, yeah. hysterectomies. Yes. Uh, in this complex, what are some common things that nobody really thought much of, but now people are like, oh, maybe mm -hmm. all this contamination is what, what's caused my health problems? Well, I've come across a lot of parents whose children have had scarlet fever. Um, not only scarlet fever, just numerous amounts of ear infections, upper respiratory infections, um, a lot of ADHD, children with behavior problems, learning disabilities. I've also come across a lot of women that have um, lost children in, in, while they're pregnant. They just had miscarriages, numerous numbers of miscarriages or children not being carried to full term that have had a lot of health problems as well. But I've also come across a lot of women that have a lot of female issues as far as um, fibroid tumors or a lupus. Um, rheumatoid arthritis, these are things that we were supposed to get later on in life, but we're being diagnosed with these things middle way through. Going through menopause at 29 and you're, there's nothing you're not supposed to go through until you're at least 50, 60 years old. And what about uh, cancers and things like that? Yes, I know a lot of people whose parents have died from cancer, different forms of cancer. These were healthy women that just one day had cancer and died within years. And relatively young? Relatively young. And most of these things, they don't have like long family histories of these illnesses. No, no, not as I know of, but I had four aunts, two on my mom's side and two on my dad's side that were born and raised inside of this area in between zones one and two, and they all have died before the age of 60. All of them. And that's shocking that they don't make it to past the age of 60. That's really scary. And a lot of people have had a lot of problems with their teeth falling out, loose teeth, um, the gums being black. It's just a lot of things that, you know, we didn't tie this to anything. We just thinking that maybe it was just poor hygiene with their mouth or not going to the dentist and different things. But now looking back, a lot of our children's teeth have been capped and all of these other problems and not knowing if their the deficiency from the lead was causing their teeth to fall out or become brittle. Did you have something? Yeah, I wanted to say something uh, directly. Uh, you know, Jordan, this is, I'm going to do a controlled mini rant because I respect you. I've been in over 60 contamination events, just when you think you've seen it all. Nothing like this. So think about so, this. I just want to go, when you say contamination events, does that mean 60 cities? Does that mean? 60 cities, locations from Bakken whale train explosions to the Exxon Mobil Mayflower tar sands spill in Mayflower, Arkansas. So I've seen a lot of affected communities and disasters. Uh, just, I've, just when you think you've seen it all in the cover-ups and the contaminations and the failure in, in, in water testing uh, to look for the right contaminants. Mm -hmm. um, so they build something. I want to put this in perspective. So, you're, so you, you build this on a lead factory. Mm -hmm. The EPA comes in here. This is one of the most epic failures across all levels. So all these affected residents with all these health symptoms and they don't test your water. And I keep reminding myself sitting here after experiencing this, and the viewers need to understand, this, this, this is, I'm reminding myself right now that this is the United States of America, mm -hmm. and, and I'm all for all the aid we give to third world countries and all that, mm -hmm. but it, this, this, this should not be happening in the United States of America. And, and, and viewers and people need to understand, we need to help these communities. 
and it is just unacceptable that you don't know what's in your water. You don't know what's in your water with what's going on. I, I just, I, I, I just can't. As much as I do this, I can't even believe what I'm seeing here in East Chicago. And I want to, uh, before we start testing, I want to explain something because I think why Scott and I uh, are working together. So again, the headlines around the country have been about lead. And that's very important, and we're going to test for lead. But bacteria could be just as problematic. So, for example, Scott could explain it as also. In Flint, Michigan, uh, when the pipes were shown to have corroding lead get, get, getting into the water, they started recoating the pipes in, in those pipes. They recoat the pipes with orthophosphates. Scott could explain it better than me. But essentially, what that did was... Rob Peter to pay Paul. Explain it. Yes, you've got the galvanized pipes, as the plumbers will explain, like magnets for lead. So to, 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 to prevent that lead from escaping from the old galvanized pipes, you put orthophosphate or phosphoric acid in as a coating, and then you also have accumulation of iron. And as water treatment expert Bob Bocock, 38 years, who I work with, he works with Aaron Brockovich, says over and over again, Scott, iron and phosphor, phosphate compounds are food for bacteria. You need to be testing for bacteria. And as I sit here today and I listen to all these other symptoms, there's, it appears to me that there's, this is much more than lead with something going on. All these different infections, and I think you were describing what, uh, scarlet, scarlet fever, scarlet fever uh, ear infections, and a whole host of issues. Mm -hmm. So in robbing Peter to pay Paul, instead of replacing the pipes and doing the right thing, you're adding all these different chemicals to mask it, and then you're, create, you're, 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 you're providing food for bacteria. And uh, right before we start testing, a couple more things. Number one, when President Trump uh, talks about these, these dangerous inner cities, the crime, well, maybe there's crime because you're poisoning these people with lead. Did you ever think of that? Uh, maybe, and by the way, it's not my opinion. There are reports and studies that show high crime areas are connected to high levels of lead. Now, uh, does that mean every person is, is doing bad things because of lead? No, but these communities are more exposed to these contaminants which affects your mood, your IQ, everything. Uh, number two, now, it's one thing if the EPA in these places uh, are benefit of the doubt not knowingly poisoning people. I'm not accusing them of knowingly. But the response here is alarming. They found 212 times the allowable limit in the ground soil. They didn't test the water. They said, here's a housing voucher. Could do me a favor. Can you get me that paper that said when you have to get out of here? Can we bring it with us? I think it's on the table. Okay. Uh, they, give you, uh, they give you a housing voucher to move. Well, most of these people aren't, that, aren't wealthy. They they're work a couple jobs if they have a job they are on assistance, whatever it is, uh, and they need help finding a new home. A lot of these people, a lot of these people don't have vehicles to go drive an hour and a half away. You, how, how, how much have you driven? Oh, I've been to look at at least 40 properties, which consist of apartments, homes, just trying to find somewhere to go. I've been through Hammond, Hobart, Shareville, Maryville, Ham, well, East Chicago, Highland, Griffith, and I've had to take myself to all these places with no help or no assistance from even for gas or mileage. I've done it all on my own. And here's what we do in America. We poisoned you. Then we're not going to thoroughly test to make sure we know the extent of the poisoning. And then we're going to give you letters. Kick your ass on the way out. Get out of here. That's the deadline. These people are supposed to be out of here. But like she said, she hasn't gotten any help to get out of here. She's still paying the rent, and she doesn't even know what the hell she's paying for. She's still paying the water bill, correct? Yeah, I'm still paying the water bill. They stopped our rent back in um, November, but I paid from July to November, knowing that I was living somewhere contaminated. I was scared not to pay my rent because I was thinking that I would be evicted if I didn't, and they didn't return anything. They kept it off. <laughs> okay, so here's the nitty gritty. We're gonna start testing. Um, Scott can explain uh, what we're testing. Uh, we're, we're not going to do the whole test live. We'll do some of it live. Uh, tell them uh, what we're looking for. 
we're going to start with the sink. We're going to start with the cold water to see, and we're going to look for metals and see what potential metals are in the water. And the key metals we're looking for are obviously lead, copper, iron, phosphorus. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go into the, your hot shower. And we're going to test using a variety of methods. We're going to take what we call the instant grab samples. And since you don't bathe or shower in the water for a split second, mm -hmm. and you shower in hot water, mm -hmm. we're going to take hot shower water and use a cumulative exposure method for 20 minutes. Okay. See what that exposure is over time. And I'm always trying to dumb it down, you know, Jordan, or make it simple to understand, but the issue is water and contamination are never in equilibrium. We talked about that. It's not a closed loop system. And if you, you want to test the same way humans encounter water. Okay. And, that, and, and again, it's mind boggling to me that your water has never been tested with these issues. I mean, I believe everything. Is, I mean, I just, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. And, and, and all the contamination, water contamination events, that, that not, not one water test here. So we're going to test the sink water, we're going to test the hot shower water, um, maybe the water at the meter. Um, and we tested two other homes so far in East Chicago. Uh, one other one was in zone three. So there's three zones here. This is zone one, zone two, and zone three. Uh, so we tested zone three, uh, and we also tested a site a home outside of the Superfund site. If you don't Superfund, basically uh, the government declares a site a Superfund. Daniel on camera, do I have this right? They declare it a Superfund uh, if, it's, super, on top, if super, it's on top of known contaminants. Yeah, Superfund is a nice way of saying you're on top of toxic waste. Right, right. Mm. Super. So uh, we did one right outside the Superfund site. Because I want to know, is this only limited to the Superfund site, or are there homes with contamination outside the Superfund site? Because they're certainly not testing those homes. And by the way, it's not just East Chicago, it's not just Flint. Google it. Cleveland, Milwaukee, uh, Atlanta, Florida. Apparently my, my home of Long Island is now contaminated. Toledo. Toledo. New Orleans. New Orleans California. Florida's got a lot of problems. So I'm not fear mongering, I'm not trying to scare you, but the reason uh, this is all important is because it's not necessarily just communities that are built on top of lead plants. A lot, uh, the most majority of this country is on top of decrepit infrastructure that uh, extremist Republicans refuse to give money to. Corporate Democrats aren't exactly kicking up a stink either. So, uh, you know, until that is changed, and we don't need water filters, you need the pipes dug out and changed. And you need, when they say, oh, they clean it out, Daniel can, can attest to this, uh, when they say they're cleaning out certain areas, really what they're saying is they're applying money to the problem. Yeah, you can't, a lead isn't something you can just go in. And when we were describing, uh, they were describing how they were cleaning up, for example, the backyard of, uh, figuring name across the street from Maritza. Uh, I know when I do uh, lead renovation work, I'm, I have to wear a full uh, body suit, everything. So when they had the person's house that they were cleaning out, um, they put their own workers at risk so they wouldn't because I had someone that actually lives in uh, an apartment with me uh, he's a, a neighbor upstairs he actually uh, had a similar story he told me this so when they said uh, that they're not wearing uh, uh, suits it was putting the workers at risk so that people don't worry it's all of it's been a, a, a farce of a fix from the start mm -hmm. and you don't do that on accident yeah. all right so we're going to start testing Jordan, I want to get ahead of one thing yeah. I, I want to say you know, I want to get ahead of this. For those of uh, for those out there on the other side that want to accuse us of fear mongering and all that, I want to deal with this up front. This is about bringing people together for a solution. And Albert Einstein, and I need to repeat this uh, for the viewers, said 90% of solving a problem is admitting one and diagnosing it. And that's what we're here to do, admit it and diagnose it. And we have an army of union plumbers, 350,000 members, highly trained that can deal with it. So if we diagnose the problem throughout the cities, in this country, we can solve it. We're not here to fear mark. We're finally, we're here to protect and preserve your health, everyone else's health. So we're here in a positive way to solve problems. So I just wanted to add that. And I'll just add that I'm here to expose corruption and take the bad things out. But that's just me. So uh, share this video. Let's get it going now. This could be your community. I'm not fear mongering. It could, East Chicago didn't know until they knew. Flint didn't know until they knew. All these places that we just mentioned didn't know until it came out in the news. So let's start testing. We'll show you the process and go from there. But share this video.